Okay, so a couple people had responded to a question I put out, uh, what do you want to see that you haven't seen yet on the website, and it had to do with the upper cervical spine. So we're going to review just mechanics of the OA and the AA joints and uh, demonstrate just some assessments with that. So if you remember, with the OA and the AA joints, the coupling pattern for those two segments are contralateral meaning that when you side bend one way, it will rotate the opposite, or if you rotate one way, side bend the opposite. So those occur whether you're in flexion or extension uh, at either segment. So just keep that in mind. Contralateral coupling, side bend, rotate to the opposite sides. In the OA, the uh, occipital lateral joint, that is affected by flexion and extension. So if you nod your chin down, both those condyles glide backward. So if you want to assess the ability, the maximal ability for one side to glide posteriorly, and we're talking about the occiput, we would position them in flexion, side bend the opposite way, rotate the same way, and assess the glide on that side. And that would be for flexion at the OA joint. So if you want to check for extension, again, contralateral coupling, you position them in extension because when you extend, both of those condyles glide anterior, and then we would side bend toward the same side, rotate to the opposite side, and then you could assess the glide that way. <clears throat> and when we go to the AA joint, that again, most people know is mainly rotation for its function, but we wanna check the glides, and the glides aren't in a pure um, plane like this. There are, there's actually a, a, a posterior inferior and anterior inferior glide on each side. So we can position that in slight amount of side bending in a neutral position so you don't have to be extended or flexed but from a neutral position side bend slightly and then rotate to the opposite side and you can feel this side glide anterior inferior or i'll show you how we position it but we're actually going to put uh, pressure on c2 and assess the glide from underneath when you're going to the when you're rotating to that same side so that's what we're going to do this is what it's going to look like <clears throat> So, can you scoot a little bit more toward me? Mm -hmm. And if need be, we can move the camera around just to get better angles of everything. But, say that we're going to look at flexion of the OA on this right side. I can assess it in sitting very easily. And one of the easiest things you could do is just say, alright, maybe he's limited in rotation. If he's limited in rotation, I don't know if it's OA or AA but I can easily poke his chin forward, which again is assessing extension of the, AH, the OA joint, excuse me. And if he rotates to the right and that gets worse, that means it could be a possibility of his right OA joint not extending very well. On the flip side, if I bring him and I flex him in the upper cervical spine and have him rotate to the right and that gets limited even more, could be that the right side of OA is not flexing. So we can use the limitation of rotation and bias either flexion or extension in the upper cervical, uh, so, uh, upper cervical spine to see if it's OA on either side. And of course, you know, that all goes with the mechanics. So here, <clears throat> I'm going to have my thumb of my left hand on C1. I'm going to position him again in flexion, go right behind the mastoid process to be on C1. And then here I can position him at the barrier that he's lost. From there, I can easily assess the glide, but what I'm going to do is wrap my arm around his head, bringing my elbow just you know over his nose, and then my hand turns up so that I don't want to, I don't want to strangle him. But I bring it right around there and then I just cradle his head like this. So I don't have to really do anything with his head, but I'm cradling it. And then all, all the pressure comes from my left thumb to see is there a glide at that right side of OA. So when I push his C1 forward, that's relatively checking posterior glide of the occiput. Because he's in flexion, slight side bending to the left and rotation to the right, I'm assessing this right side's ability to maximally glide relatively posterior. So that is one way that we can assess OA flexion on one side. So if I keep him here and we say maybe it's uh, got worse with extension, 
when he rotates to the right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to keep my thumb in the same place, but I'm going to take my middle finger and I'm going to hook it around C1 on this side. Same kind of position with my arm, except this time I'm going to take the ulnar border of my hand and wrap it around behind his mastoid like so. So he's in extension. I can bring him into a slight side bending to the left, and then I can feel does I can pull that left side of his occiput anterior to see does he have any gliding ability of that left OA into extension. Okay, so that's OA flexion and extension. How do we assess it in sitting? If we go to AA, only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to hold with this lumbrical grip. I'm going to hold. C2. And then if I'm going on the opposite side away from me, and we're still going to keep with rotating to the right. I want to assess, because he's rotating to the right, I want to assess the left side's ability to glide down and forward. And how we look at that, let's say he's in neutral, he's not in flexion or extension, but he's in neutral. I position him at the barrier. I grasp C2, like I said. Come around. Again, you don't want to put your elbow over their nose or over their mouth, so come around over that way. I'm not on occiput anymore, I'm below the mastoid. And then I could tip his head to the left, rotate him to the right, and you see there's a barrier. And then from there, the ulnar side of my hand is on the posterior part of C1 on this left side. And all I gotta do is assess is their ability to glide anterior and inferior. And so that's checking the left side of C1 gliding into an inferior, which again goes with right rotation at AA. If we're going to look at the left, or excuse me, the opposite side, the right side, as he's rotating to the right, remember that because of this movement that occurs at AA, as he rotates to the right, this right side will glide down and back. Right? It's that bowl on a bowl analogy of AA. So gliding down and back on the right, I'm going to take my left thumb here and instead of trying to reach around or do something funky and push C1 back, I'm just going to position him at his barrier and push up and forward on C2 on this right side to assess a relative down and back of C1 on the right side. So when we go and do that, again, position him at his barrier. My thumb is on C2 on the right, posterior aspect of it. I'm going to come back, cradle his head like we did before, and then I can side bend again, initiate side bending, take up any slack with rotation, and then my left thumb is going to push up and forward and see is there any gliding ability at that segment. Good. So that is how we assess it in sitting. There are a whole number of other things that we can do in supine, which maybe I'll take another video of in a little bit. But those are the major things with OA and AA, the upper cervical spine. Remember that it's contralateral coupling, side band rotation occur opposite. If you want to look at OA, you got to incorporate flexion or extension to really maximally check the glide. If you're just looking at AA, you can keep them in neutral, which for most people, that is kind of how they come in. That's not neutral. So we want to bring them into a neutral position and then be able to check the glides that way. Again, it's anterior and inferior on the opposite side. You know, if they're rotating to the right, anterior and inferior on this left side. Posterior and inferior on this right side when we're looking at AA. So, hope you guys find that useful. Again, I can take another video and do something else in supine and maybe even show you some of the mobilizations. You can imagine the mobilizations are pretty much the same as the assessment of the glides. But just to show you some other different things, uh, we'll probably do that in some other time. So thanks as always. We really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any other suggestions or what you want to see, please let me know. I'd love to shoot it. Otherwise, see you next time.